There was a time when your bank would lend you 108% of the value of a house that you wanted to buy. Those days are long gone. It's a decade ago. Nowadays, it's really hard to get a bank loan because banks, like many buyers, are really scared of the property market. And we've begun to see in South Africa property prices to starting to come down. We are on the Atlantic seaboard, one of the most sought-after property destinations in the world until fairly recently. This house that we're sitting in in Camps Bay is on the market at 49 million rand. That's a bond repayment of about, give or take, 500,000 rand a month. And you wonder why it's still on the market. But yes, the property sector is coming under pressure. Great pleasure to welcome to Taking Stock, Andrew Golding, who's the chief executive of Pam Golding Properties. How long has this house been on the market at 49, and it's not even the most expensive house along the seaboard, Rand? Yeah, Bruce, hello. It's uh, been on the market for, for quite a long time, for 18 months. It actually started uh, at 65 million and has come down to 49 million, which is a, what it's on the market at the moment. It's a bargain. <laughs> what is the problem? I mean, uh, other than it's 500,000 rand a month in mortgage payments for somebody who had to take a mortgage to buy it, and people who buy these sorts of houses don't do that. Why are properties like this sitting on the market where five years ago they would have been selling like hotcakes? Yeah, I think that generally speaking, the market has unquestionably come off. Uh, the top end is, is clearly also under some pressure. Um, but notwithstanding that, the, the, these kinds of properties do take a while to, to sell and do eventually move. So um, uh, this property will sell, whether it sells at 49 or close to 49 remains to be seen. Uh, but notwithstanding that, I think that uh, the, the market is, is generally speaking, um, starting to improve uh, post the election. And um, we're optimistic about what the rest of the year looks like. I mean, this is about a thousand square meters of land on a mountainside in Camps Bay. There are no spare plots anywhere around. It's a finite commodity. And that's one of the reasons why this Atlantic seaboard has done as well as it has for, for decades now. Yeah. Just really su simple supply and demand, um, and this particular part of the world is uh, is a global asset, um, and is is generally priced in global terms. So, is com comparative with the likes of Saint Tropez and other parts of the world, uh, and if one compares those kinds of prices, then. Uh, notwithstanding where the market is at the moment, uh, Clifton is still a bargain. That's been the selling point for many years, that this is South Africa's Riviera. It is amongst the most sought after property in the world, up until a point when it no longer was. What was that point? What was the tipping point where suddenly somebody put the brakes on? I think it was a, a confluence of factors. It included the water crisis that, that Cape Town had, uh, the political uncertainty leading up uh, to the election. Uh, and I, I think the fact, the fact that Cape Town as a market had gone really strong for a number of years uh, and just needed to slow down, I think that's where we find ourselves. Uh, we find ourselves, I think, in a very interesting uh, phase of the market. We're now post-election. I think that sentiment is improving. Uh, and I think opportunities exist uh, for potential uh, buyers uh, before this market starts to really move again. I think the inherent value of the Atlantic seaboard as a, a global asset as a sought-after destination for high net worth buyers is still inherently there. I mean, you haven't started this business in memory serves in the 80s. 76. 76. Yeah. I mean, what a great time to be starting in a property yeah. market. The yeah. 76 student uprising, of course, led to a massive drain of confidence. Yeah. She would have gone through the 1980s and the Rubicon speech. I mean, their story is a legion of people going and handing keys back to bank managers yeah. and saying, you take it, and people yeah. buying houses in Hurlinghams and Craig Halls of, of Johannesburg for 5,000 Rand a time, which sounds like not very much money, or maybe it was 50,000 Rand at that time, yeah. not very much money. At that time, a huge amount of money. But confidence in South Africa in property does tend to be pretty volatile. It certainly does, and I think you're right. I think we've seen a number of these kinds of cycles um, governed by crises, and uh, the market always seems to rebound because I think uh, you know, what we do have here on the Atlantic seaboard and in South Africa generally is, uh, is some fantastic property which is going to ultimately maintain its value and retain its value. Well, that's the estate agent in you speaking. I mean, you're a medical doctor by profession, um, and so you have to be an optimist. Otherwise, you, you know, the medical doctors would never operate on a patient. This patient is critically ill. This patient is, if not in intensive care, certainly in high care. No, Bruce, I think we, we have a choice around optimism and pessimism. And I think if you choose optimism, <clears throat> that is a, is a fundamental choice that one's able to make. And I think that certainly in terms of um, a view of South Africa and the future, 
uh, one can be, can be optimistic. And if one takes that view, then the inherent value in properties like this and others around us here uh, is there. Uh, and I think that the, the property market um, fundamentally is going to continue to improve uh, as the country improves because that's my optimistic view. I mean, we, we were at the Leonardo the other day, the tallest building in Africa. I don't know if you're going to be, if you've been involved in selling some of those properties. But again, it's one of those sorts of developments which has been built Lego style yeah. on a view as to how optimistic people are. There is still investment going into fixed property. I mean, people are still buying into bricks and mortar, but it seems to be quite rare and very specific in terms of where people are putting their money yeah, right now. Yeah, I think like, like many um, cycles, there is an opportunity for early adopters, and then there's an opportunity for people to follow uh, a bit of a market lead. Uh, and I think we're in that phase now where there is an opportunity for early adopters, and we call them bargain hunters, to get into the market uh, and take a view. It's a speculative view because uh, the market may go either way, but if you take a view that the market's going to turn positively and that the country is going to improve uh, during the course of the next few years, then now's the time to get in. South Africa is a great place for opportunists. I mean, this uh, at 65 million 18 months ago, now sitting at 49 million. In 18 months' time, it might be at 35, it, it could be at 30, it could be at 25. Or it could be at 75. <laughs> How do we know? Yeah, and I think that's the, that's the million dollar question. We don't know. Uh, and so it really it is a judgment call. Um, I think you know, it's very difficult to call the bottom of the market. It's very difficult to call the top of the market. Uh, and so one's got to take a view uh, on, on all of this. And, and our view is obviously an optimistic one, uh, probably a biased optimistic one. Um, but, but that's my fundamental belief is that the inherent value <coughs> in Cape Town, in South Africa, and these kinds of properties is there uh, and that the market will in fact turn. Uh, positively. Dr. Andrew Golding is the chief executive of the Pam Golding Property Group. We're sitting in a house that this week only is at 49 million, it may go to 55 next week or 35 10 weeks from now. We have absolutely no idea and that's the nature of the property market. It's a confidence game but at the same time replacement values of properties, in other words putting bricks and mortar into the ground and building from scratch, those costs are escalating at inflation plus builders don't come cheap, even the bad ones and we know there are plenty of those but at some point there has to be an equilibrium reached more on that in a moment in some real houses not this la la land fantasy stuff we'll talk about real houses too in a moment welcome to taking stock we're talking about the property market and it's breezy here in Camps Bay, or is it Clifton? Where is the boundary of this place? I mean, there's no border fence or anything. No, Bruce, we're in Clifton. Are you in Clifton? Oh, we're in Clifton Road here. In Clifton, I know it's called Clifton Road, but there's a Clifton Road in the old, there are like six Clifton Roads in this town. No wonder it's confusing. Anyway, so we're in Clifton. We're in Clifton. Is Clifton better than Camps Bay? Well, the prices are generally slightly higher, but Camps Bay is still a very much a blue chip suburb too. Okay, and then the Clifton 4321, and there are blocks of flats on here. I mean, 100 years ago, I saw a Tinas de Jong painting along here. There was like five or six buildings. I mean, there has been an extraordinary amount of development. This is not the real world. I mean, this is lots of captains of industry, I'm sure. Lots of asset managers live along here. Possibly lots of foreigners have got properties they come to for a month, a year. In the real world, on the other side of the mountain, to more general suburbs, what's happened in that property market? Uh, so there's no question that the property market uh, started to turn uh, towards a more negative uh, growth pattern about two years ago. Does that coincide precisely with the beginnings of the stirrings of the land debate? Yeah, I think it, 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 the land debate certainly had a, an, an impact on it. Um, I think probably the major uh, impact was due to the economy itself uh, and the, the slowing down of the economy, the lack of growth. Uh, also the cyclical nature of the property market itself. Uh, and we've certainly seen um, very sluggish house price growth uh, since then. I think that um, post the election result, our expectation is that the market is going to slowly start to improve, that house price growth off the back of a hopefully an improving economy will begin to gain some momentum again. And possibly a, a more friendly interest rate cycle as well. A more I mean, friendly we interest rate cycle. Europe is stimulating, the yeah. US is likely to cut, we're in a cutting sort of frame of mind. Yeah, the interest rate will undoubtedly uh, have a, a positive effect if it's, it starts to get reduced. Um, and I think sentiment is the, probably the biggest determinant of the general market. 
uh, and uh, an improving sentiment will undoubtedly improve the property market. I mean, is there a nationwide slump? Is there a part of the country that, despite all of the bad news, is actually seeing demand and seeing some growth? Yeah, there, there are always pockets of excellence uh, in property markets uh, throughout the world, and South Africa is no different. So there are a number of areas in the country, a number of genres of property types where there's, in fact, buoyant trading and a buoyant market and house price growth. But generally but where? Well, uh, take the student towns, for example. The student towns are probably uh, the outliers and, and best performers. So Makanda, despite the fact that they've got less water than Cape Town, yeah. is, I mean, it's amazing what people will pay for houses there. Yeah, so they, there's, there's, a, you know, yeah. there's a supply and demand um, dynamic there, which is fascinating. A town like Stellenbosch uh, also continues to be a, a, a pocket of excellence uh, off the back of high demand uh, and low supply. Uh, I think the retirement um, genre itself uh, is one which is uh, also undersupplied and has a significant demand both within the major metros of the country but also in the outlying uh, towns. Uh, I think we're continuing to see brisk trade on prime seafront uh, small town property like Hermanus or Plettenberg Bay where again we're talking about a, a small market with high demand and low supply. Estate agents are a lot like farmers. I mean, for farmers, it's either rainy too much or too little. And estate agents, you go to look at a house, for example, and you say, well, what else have you got? So, oh, well, there's no stock. Yeah. And that's usually a great sign for the estate agency businesses because yeah. it means that stock is turning really quickly. Yeah. At the moment, you must have a huge amount of stock. People who have overextended themselves in recent years, people who may be moving, downscaling, relocating. There's, so, you know, there's a lot of talk around uh, the migration issues at times yeah. of political and economic uncertainty in South Africa. What's the stock take? No, there's no question that there is uh, stock availability. There's, there's lots of property for sale, but I think it's important to differentiate between uh, the kinds of properties that are on the market and priced to sell in the current market and properties which are on the market but which are hoping uh, to sell. And those are fundamentally two different um, selling types. What sells? Uh, correctly priced properties which are priced to sell in today's market where buyers know that they have the upper hand does, in the current environment. Does anybody know though? I mean this comes down back to the point of this lovely house over here which yeah. overlooks this beautiful Clifton area of Cape Town. Um, that you know, at 65, 18 months ago, now, uh, now, now at 49, you know, at some point, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's a barometer I suppose as to yeah. wh where somebody goes, I better grab it now before somebody else does, he has an offer of 45 or whatever. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a mixture of art and science here. So there is a certain amount of science one is able to do a comparative market analysis of this road for example and look back five years and see exactly what sold at what date and at what price but at the same time uh, there's no way to tell which buyer is going to walk in the door tomorrow and have a look at this property and say this is my dream home uh, I want this uh, and I'm prepared to pay this price. Typically, what sort of people buy these houses? Okay, it's not somebody who's going to come in and go to their bank and say, I'd like a mortgage please and be paying 500,000 rand no, a month. It's very unlikely to be a mortgage buyer uh, and much more likely to be a cash buyer. So it's somebody who uh, has the means, uh, whether they be a local buyer or an international buyer, and who wants um, this property and who sees value in it, uh, both from either a local perspective, but also from an international perspective. So if one does the, the dollar or pound conversion on 49 million rand and compares that with what you can get for the equivalent in other parts of the world, then there is often a, a very positive arbitrage uh, outcome. I mean, this may be a 50 million rand house, but just up the hill over there in, I don't know, this lower Clifton, upper Clifton, there's a road called Nettleton Road. Yep which is reputedly the most expensive road on this continent, if not one of the most expensive roads in the world. And one of the reasons for that is the houses are big and I'm sure lovely, but there's no wind in that particular road. I mean, yeah. what is the price of the Southeaster to properties in Cape Town? Yeah, I think it's, it's difficult to say what the specific premium is for wind, but there's no question that the composite uh, that you get from uh, a road like Nettleton with its incredible views, its position, the lack of wind, uh, and the size of the homes. People pay 100 million rand a house then? Yeah, the, the entry level is more or less 100 million. Entry rand. level? <laughs> more or less. I mean, Certainly then, between 50 and 100. And, and, I mean, and there's still properties in Cape Town, with the APSA Bank building in Cape Town is being converted now and that's going at what, 50 to 70,000 rand per square meter. So you're looking at studio flats at two and a half million rand. Two to rand. three million rand, yeah. Astonishing. 
I mean, is there a market for that sort of stuff? Bruce, there is. Uh, there's, a, there's a market both in terms of investors and, in fact, end users. Uh, obviously, it's a question of affordability, but to the extent that one is able to afford that and finds it desirable, then that's where the market is for uh, those kinds of properties. But isn't there an oversupply of those sorts of properties? There was a boom certainly in Cape Town three or four years ago, the uh, the letting market, the, um, the guys doing the short-term rentals and stuff and using global apps to, to rent their properties and people were running businesses and buying up flats and borrowing money and gearing themselves yeah. to the hilt. One gets a sense that that tide has gone out and there are lots of people who don't have their swimming clothes well, on. Certainly that market has slowed down. There's no, there's no two ways about that. But I think what's changed fundamentally from particularly a Cape Town perspective is that Cape Town is truly a global city now and as a consequence is very much on the global map. But how many foreigners are actually buying? Because years ago this was the, the speculation was and there was lots of conjecture and nonsense that this was all just foreign owned and this was oligarchs and drug dealers and you know all kinds yeah. of people with nefarious personal habits who were buying these sorts of properties. Yeah, the, the, the foreign market is not huge but it does make the difference. It's probably between 10 and 15 percent of that particular market, whether that's the inner city market or the Camps Bay or Clifton market. So, so they're, not, they're not making the price? It makes the difference. They're not making the price at all. And in fact, the, the, the notion that a foreigner is going to pay more than a local buyer is, is an absolute myth. Uh, they'll pay what the, market, what the correct market value is. So the market is being made predominantly by locals. And, and the housing market through generations is a question of confidence. It is, will I be able to sell this property for more than I've paid for it five years, 10 years, 15, even 20 years from now? Yeah, and I think particularly a medium to long-term view. So I think the notion of a, of a quick flip uh, and a turnaround is, is really not what this market is about. But if one looks at Cape Town um, over the years, it has consistently performed exceptionally well in terms of house price growth and capital growth. And, uh, and I think that's what investors and speculators are looking at. What do you anticipate is going to be the catalyst for the next housing recovery in South Africa? Because generally, house prices, 3 4 5% down, the FMB statistics yeah. are pointing out that there's nationwide slowdown. Houses are cheaper today than they were a year ago. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the, the moment that we were looking for was the positive election outcome, and I think that's happened. And I think as we go through the rest of the year, we're going to start to see uh, positive political and economic signals which are uh, going to compound on each other to create uh, a change in sentiment and I think that sentiment is going to start to uh, become evident towards the end of the year and that will be the catalyst to the housing market going again not only in Cape Town but the country generally. Now many people who can buy houses like this for cash have got global assets. They've got money they can put anywhere in the world. And we've seen, for example, migration plans. Countries like Portugal and others say if you invest a, an amount of money, I think it's $750,000 or it could be euros, in our country in fixed property, you can get citizenship. And that for many people has been positive in places like Malta. Um, but the UK market has also been a really interesting one, particularly the London market, which has always got a good buy to let market, has been one in in South Africa in which Andrew Golding has participated as an agent in a partnership with a UK firm as well and many South Africans have done very well on that as the UK property market boomed and of course the rand depreciated now with Brexit and political uncertainty there yes political uncertainty in the United Kingdom what happens to buyers from South Africa of global property assets? All of Australia's capital cities of all of their um, of all of their states have recently reported declines there too in a very hot property market. Europe is stimulating their economy. The United States cutting interest rates to try and keep that economy moving. Is the property market good anywhere in the world? More on that in a moment. Well, as we sit here in Clifton in Cape Town and the entire country's property market is quite subdued, the rest of the world's property market seem to be under quite a lot of pressure as well. I mean, Australia, I saw a picture in the, in the Australian Review um, that um, there is a very clear indication that Australia is slowing down. The UK, post the, the Brexit mess that has happened over the last three years, has seen big declines in property prices, particularly in inner London, where many South Africans with means have actually invested in recent years. Yeah, I think there, there has been a, a shift in the, in the global property market. A number of the major uh, cities of the world are going through a, 
an interesting time. I think from a, from a South African perspective, uh, the diversification opportunity that uh, these global cities and other destinations uh, represent continue to offer opportunities uh, for South Africans. Obviously, the, the golden visa uh, opportunity is a separate one on its own. That's the, there's Portugal and Malta, places like that. So you yeah. can get an EU passport yeah. if you come and invest in fixed property. And after five years, if you're still here, you, you, get, your, you get your passport. Generally speaking, it's a, a period of time in Malta. It's, it's, uh, it's much quicker than that. In Portugal, it's five years. Uh, and I think that uh, what we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years is that increasingly South Africans are looking to diversify into the global property market. You call it diversification, I call it plan B. I mean, in some cases, I'm sure it is that sort yeah. of thing. And it's so interesting that people will go into bricks and mortar in other, in other, in other jurisdictions as well and not go into equity markets. Because how, I don't know how far you go back in terms of your records and certainly as just on the, off the cuff, but if we go back to when Mandela was released from prison in 1990 or on the day that he was elected president in 1994, it's a good quarter of a century. How is the property market in South Africa held up versus, I don't know, the JSE over that time or over global property markets over that time? Yes, the South African market uh, has performed extremely well over that period of time uh, if one takes a long view. And I think then one's got to do that, both in terms of looking at one's South African property portfolio, but also in terms of the, the international portfolio. So certainly at the moment, London uh, represents a buying opportunity off the back of, of Brexit. But uh, uh, there's no doubt that London, and particularly if one takes the currency into account, uh, has been an extremely good bet for South African investors. But as we sit here, I mean, there are thundering jackhammers and there's heavy equipment all around us. There, there are various building sites going on. There is still money going in to brand new property and to build almost, in a, especially in a place like this where you're building on a mountainside, um, at a, on, almost on a sheer cliff. It's a very expensive construction process. You're not going to get much change out of tens of millions of rand to build a property like this from scratch. At some point, there has to be an equilibrium. I mean, it costs more to build it, so therefore, built a property you know, will stabilize. Yeah, I think uh, there, there are always people who will take a contrarian view of, I suppose, the conventional wisdom of the time. And certainly we're seeing that uh, there are a number of people who are investing uh, both in terms of buying property, but also in terms of developing property because they have a long-term or medium-term view of what the property market is going to do in Cape Town or in the country. Uh, and they, they take an optimistic view of that and a long-term one. Or unrealistic. I mean, there is a real fear that this market doesn't recover, that South Africa's economy doesn't go, Moody's does downgrade us, that we do go into a period of perpetual zero growth. This economy hasn't grown in real terms for five years now. Yeah, so th that certainly is a, is a view. Um, but I think that the, the investors who are choosing to develop and invest uh, are obviously taking a, a different view, which is that they're going to uh, invest today for a medium to long term uh, investment return. Uh, ultimately when they exit those properties. Which is the best property market in the world right now? And don't say because you've got 400 houses in the <laughs> southern suburbs of Cape Town and your books that it's Cape Town because it may or may not be the I, case. I right? think there are a number of different locations and it depends really on the, the, the buying need. Uh, so if one is looking for pure investment return uh, based on uh, the property market return and currency return, one could get a certain answer. If one looks for a lifestyle component to that investment, one could easily say the Atlantic seaboard of Cape Town. I think from a South African perspective, in terms of desirability, the Atlantic seaboard has got to be the blue chip investment uh, destination. And right now there are buying opportunities. Uh, <laughs> Lots <laughs> of them. <laughs> that, I mean, that exist. I mean, do you get a sense of panic or not? So, Bruce, I think that, that the property market is always going to be uh, cyclical and, and it's always going to move. A, do you get a sense of panic? Are people really scared, slightly afraid, tenuous, apprehensive, cautious? So What's the I, mood? I, I, think you, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier by saying that, you know, if one looks back over the last 30 years, there have been a number of points of crisis uh, that the country has experienced or that the, the sentiment has expressed. And I think we, we're in that uh, another period of those right now where people are taking a view on the future of the country post the election um, but I think that the, the overwhelming sentiment is that this election result was more positive than negative significantly so uh, and so I think if one was to just to get a proper uh, opinion 
uh, of, of a great number of people and we get a positive result rather than a panicked result. If we start getting some interest rate cuts, and there's very clear indications that we might, inflation, there's no demand in the economy, so inflation is low, and if the US keeps cutting to try and stimulate their economy and global growth continues and Chinese demand for iron ore continues, they keep industrializing. I mean, all of those things are good factors. South Africa doesn't go over the, uh, over the cliff and, uh, and into, into the, 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 the lovely swimming pool down there, that we get back to a normal. What yeah. is that normal? Is that a normal of 5% above inflation in the property market? Because that's kind of what we got used to after the madness of the sort of pre-2008 period. Yeah, I would say that is, a, that is a description of normal. So, you know, some significant real house price growth above inflation uh, as a consequence of an economy uh, that is genuinely on the move, uh, where sentiment is, uh, is positive uh, and where there's an appetite for uh, investment. Uh, and I think that that's a real scenario. Dr. Andrew Golding, from your lips, so we certainly hope so. I mean, there was a time where you would buy a property in full expectation that in five years' time, not only would you cover the cost of the transfer duties and the state agents' fees and all of that sort of stuff, that you would still be in the money. And a lot of people have made good money out of South African property, not only residential property, but rental properties. And that sort of cycle feels a bit edgy right now. It feels a little bit nervous right now. But history, and this is where I start to sound like a bit of like a financial services ad, but past performance is no guarantee of future performance but our history tells us that we go through cycles of deep pain and deep discontent and deep discomfort and things go get cheaper before they get more expensive but the cycles of the past suggest that the cycles of the future do continue we certainly hope so and for the seller of this house in Clifton at 49 million rand if you've got an offer I'll take commission I'm not allowed to do that but Andrew Golding will sell it to you thank you very much for watching taking stock we've been taking stock on the state of the property market this evening here on ENCA until next time bye bye